schedule we had set up and, and said that. Different for, for this other years, you weren't maybe sure how this group would handle it with Texas representing last word power conference for the Big East. How would you kind of say your team is, has uh, done so far? I mean, obviously, besides the uh, wins on these, you know, that, that, that's, that's the last little clause there makes the question interesting. Um, you know, starting the year, sitting here now, if I say we have one loss, I don't know how many wins we have right now, one loss, um, I'd probably be very surprised. Uh, but then that being said, um, we have to play a lot better uh, than we have been playing uh, once conference play rolls around. So, you know, how we handled it so far, I guess we've handled it fine. I think, you know, the good thing about the preseason and, you know, stating the obvious, we still have a few games left in the preseason, is, is you get a chance to, to, to figure out, to learn each other, to learn how it would be best for this group to win. And then now we have to work on it. These four games and for the Big East, are there specific things that, that matches are on paper? Fair board, there's certain things you'd like to, you're trying to emphasize uh, for the biggies? Well, I'm not clumping them together. Uh, we have Towson tomorrow. Uh, and so, you know, we're looking at the Towson game and we need to play well against them. Um, my generic answer, yet still true, is offense, defense, and rebound. So we need to work on those things. What do you think about facing Jarrell? Just can you talk a little bit about his time here? And yeah, I mean, I mean, he seems to have. Found a nice spot for him. He's playing very well right now, which is, is not a surprise. Uh, it's not a surprise at all. He's a very good player, so he's going to pose problems for us tomorrow, uh, just because he's he's you know he's, he's a load down there. He's a very smart player, and, and he can score. He can score down there on the block, and he's been very effective in the post. And, you know, he can handle the ball, so he draws you out. He can take you off the bounce. So you know we're going to have to really pay attention to him uh, tomorrow. But he's he's playing very very well right now, like, which is not a surprise. Is there, is there anything particular that didn't work out for him? Not necessarily. I mean, I, I don't know the stats, but, you know, one in five students transfer, one in three you know, students transfer. So, you know, him leaving, or others leaving, is it's not a question of something not necessarily working out. I mean, at, the, at the end of the day, um, this place, Georgetown, is not for everyone. Everyone's not for Georgetown. Um, doesn't make you a good guy or a bad guy. Uh, and so, Somewhere else, he's somewhere else where he seems happy. And so it's, 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 it's good. What is the challenge for a player like that angle sitting out on the end? The challenge of sitting out a year? Um, you know, I, th I think it's just merely you want to compete. You want to, you want to get out there and play. I don't think that that's, that's would be the only challenge. But you probably have to ask, one, ask him. Sure. You know, it's, sure. it's probably, much like most things in life, it's probably individual, personal. Each, with each person. Um. Could uh, dominating um, Texas the way you did, in my expression, could that be almost fool's goal for a young team, believing that they're that good when in fact they may not be? No, they have a coach that does a pretty good job <laughs> <laughs> keeping that in check. I don't, I don't think we think that we're that good. And I think, I've said this a couple times this year, I think we have an honest group, and I say honest in terms of the effort they give, honest in terms of their assessment of themselves individually as well as collectively. So I think they know that there are a lot of things that we, we're still a little, we, 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 much, we must improve on there and, and be much better at it. And so I don't think that they are floating around here thinking um, that they have, they have solved the problems of the world. How do you assess Greg's development offensively? It seems like he has so many potential weapons, it's almost like you have to pick and choose which ones to focus on. No, we're going to let him fire them all. <laughs> and and but that's that you're, the way you phrase that question is him as a player, you know. You can look at Greg who against Texas, you know, offensively had a rough day, fumbling around out there. And I left him out there on purpose just just so he can uh, continue to talk himself through it, uh, literally, <laughs> uh, which he does a lot. But what I just left him out there and bumble along. Um, but even as he's going through the rough shooting stretch, the, I think it's seven turnovers. You know, he still was a presence on defense. He still is blocking shots. He still is rebounding. He still, um, uh, uh, when, when they went to the zone, putting him at the top, he made a lot of passes, getting the ball into the overload, into the middle, to the meat of it. So he's, you heard me say, he's, he has the big responsibility. He can do so many different things. Um, and so he doesn't, you know, certain players, you know, Little Billy's a shooter. All Little Billy can do is shoot. So if Little Billy's missing, he doesn't really affect anything else. You know, Greg can be bad in one part of the game but still have a great impact in every other part. So um, the 
back, I'm, I'm flowing, wandering here, back to your question. Um, no, we're not necessarily trying to focus on Greg Whittington shooting the ball, Greg Whittington driving to the basket, Greg Whittington post ups. He's got to do it all for his sake and for ours. That was a very long answer. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, uh, just because he can do everything. Um, and and, and in his case, particularly for offense, but also just at the defensive end, he's, he's disruptive. What have you seen from Towson? Well, you know, they are, you know, they've had their ups and downs this year, but at the end of the day, they're a veteran team. I mean, they have, you know, Jarrell who went here, Dixon who went to Providence, uh, 23, and Spence Burrell. I'm going to take a look at numbers who went to South Florida. Uh, you know, so they got three biggest players right there. On the play, you know, that play, I mean, Dixon had a double-double against us, I think, a couple years ago as a freshman. Um, you know, so they have guys. It's not like they're going to come out here and, 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 and be intimidated or scared. They have guys that, that know they can play with our guys. Um, and so, uh, but then they, they're still finding, much like us, they're still finding their rhythm also. Anything else? I read your comments right after. Yeah, but I mean, you heard me say, I mean, so much of this is, is, is us getting to a level where we have to be. Um, and so you can, you, can, you can do certain things and be uh, hypothetically Liberty Duquesne game, you know, to where the outcome may have been much larger, but you may not be prepared. You can look at the Texas game where there's a, a decent margin, um, but there's still things that, that we need to be better at by the time we roll around and have to play. Mark Nichols, Mark Syracuse, Providence, everyone else in the Big East. And so um, I think that just our flow, once we started, you get away from it. So just the flow was not good. The flow was not good. Uh, you know, and a lot of it was, you know, the turnover was great, stumbling around out there, and, and we gave them some opportunities that we shouldn't have. But just, just our, our decision-making wasn't as quick and as sharp as it should have been.